Vanessa Aldereta Costa. Uh, she talked about an overview of complex shocking group. Thank you. First, I would like to thanks to the organizers for the invitation. So uh, that's it. Let's start. So I will talk about uh, complex Schottky groups. I try to do a talk in this way. I would like to tell you what are they, how can you, well, there's the question, right? Okay, I can continue. So what are they? In a classical case, Schottky groups are generated by inversions on, on spheres. Uh, but the notion of Schottky groups in higher dimension in the complexes since was made, was given by Nori in 1986, and then Seade and Berhovsky uh, give another uh, definition for, uh, for the group, complex projected transformations, for, from where the definition of complex Schottky groups arose, and the next definition that I will give was an abstraction that Angel Cano gives us. So a complex shot uh, because uh, the work of Nori and Alberto and Pepe was in a way of construction, not just an abstraction. So the abstraction was given by Angel. And the definition is that a uh, complex shot key groups in G generators uh, is a subgroup of PSL and plus one C acting in the projective space, such that in some sense is the same salt that if you know what it is, a Schottky group is almost the same. So you need uh, 2G open sets, uh, R1 to RG, S1 to SG, with G greater than one, then two, sorry, and satisfying the following. Each of these open sets is interior of itself, and the closure of, the, of them are pairwise par, yeah, the joints. So the group was a generated set, gamma 1 to gamma 2, that satisfied this one, that it is called the ping pong dynamics. So this is the definition. And what do they look like? Cano also shows in 2008 that if gamma is a subgroup of PSL and plus one C acting as a Schottky group with G generator, then it is a pure loxodromic free group with G generator. What does it mean that bigger word there? Well, we say that a projected transformation gamma in PSL and plus one C is a loxodromic uh, when gamma has a lift in SL and plus one C such that gamma tilde has at least one eigenvalue outside of the circle. So we say that a group is said to be pure loxodromic if it is composed only by loxodromic transformations. And finally, we say that a finite generated group is free if it is generated by the set without trivial uh, relations. Uh -huh. So where do they act? In this work, uh, that I forget to mention that it is a joint word, is said there, but with Carlos, Angel, and Mayra Mendez, all of this institute. So in this work, we define a new space that there is not in another place, and it is called the complex. Well, we call it the complex until the there is space. So I will give the construction to you can make some idea of what it is. So we take L and K some natural numbers such that L is greater than K. Then the following Hermitian matrix, take this one, where ID, ah, yes, I have this one. This is the identity. So we have two blocks of size K and one block of size L minus K. So the complete size is K plus L, right? So we consider this uh, Hermitian matrix and consider the Hermitian form induced by H. Then consider the unitary, uh, unitary matrix groups that preserve this form. 
that it is Yuki L no? in the usual way that we construct those groups. Now take the projectivization of these groups. This group preserves the pseudo-unitary complex ball that it is right in here. And what we call the uh -huh, complex antidesiter space is the boundary of this ball. Yes, this is the definition. And this is the space where the uh, complex, complex Schottky groups are working for us. So we have a space that it is Hermitian. So we would like to think what happened with the signature. So the first uh, thing, uh -huh. Uh -huh. what about their behavior? So we have a question. In the classical case, uh, Schottky groups are hyperbolic, but here they are hyperbolic too. This is the question that we have. So the answer is not. And this is the content of the following theorem. This is uh, one of the results that we have in this work. And the theorem is that if you have one subgroup of PSL n plus 1c uh, acting as a Schottky group in the projective space, then gamma cannot uh, be conjugated to a subgroup of P PU1n. Right? So they are not hyperbolic. And, well, but there in the work, we made a bigger result, a little bit stronger, because we want, what about the signature KL? Because, okay, in signature 1N, it doesn't happen nothing, but what about KL? No, the obviously different from 1 and N. So, question. If a Schottky group acting in the complex antidesiter space, this one, and also acting in the corresponding projective space, under which conditions it is a complex Schottky group? So, what we get there is that the only way that, uh, well, it's not the only way, it's a condition, is that that group will be act as a complex Schottky group if the signature is the same, right? If you don't have that condition, what happened is that first you can construct some spaces, one attracting and one repelling that, are, that live in connected components different, that don't, doesn't intersect them. So if you permit that K is was different to L, then there exists a parabolic space that permits to join the attracting and the repelling spaces, giving a contradiction saying that they live in different components, right? I don't know if it is clear. But this is the <coughs> one of the main results there. And I think I will, I don't know, it's good. Okay, so. What about their limit sets? Here, we have two definitions of limit sets. What we want to do is notice what difference exists in between the classic case and the complex case of these groups. So, in the classic case, the, the, the two definitions that we have for limit sets uh, coincide. Uh, so, this is the first definition that it is the Kulkarni limit set Valdemar, Valdemar told us in this morning the complete definition. This is one abstract of this big definition. Uh, so the Kulkarni limit set is the closure of the union of the set of cluster points of gamma zeta together with the set of cluster points of gamma k where zeta runs over the projective space and k over the compact set. So, and uh -huh, this is the first definition. And the second definition that we have is a definition that, that I forgot to put here in the paper of 2008, I think. And he'll give, sorry, this is a definition too. So the Schottky limit set that it is, that we call to 
Lambda sub PA. This is because Pepe and Alberto. So because it doesn't have nothing to see with Schottky limit, so, but just with Pepe and Alberto. Uh, is the complement of the region of discontinuity of gamma. I see is this one, right? So in the classic case, both of them coincide. But what happened here? There is a complex Schottky group for which those limit sets are different. So the answer is yes. Here, we, uh, well, in this paper, we give uh, an example satisfying this condition. The strategy was to construct a group satisfying all the conditions that we have, uh, free group, pure loxodromic, and with the same signature, such that the Kulkarni limit set has, has Hauser's dimension strictly bigger than three, whereas the Schottky limit set has a uh, Hauser dimension strictly less than three. So obviously those are different. And the Kulkarni limit set is, I think, always uh, the way to construct a limit set, but here we have two different, and we don't know if there are another difference with the classic case. So this is the reference for this work. I think I run in this talk because I made 20 minutes and I've finished. So thank you. <laughs> Have some question for Vanessa? Yeah, and the sitter space is a real, real manifold, huh? not complex. Ah, uh, but this is the complex anti-sitter space. Is in the no, 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 no. Ah. I mean, not ah, the no, no. manifold, the manifold. Ah, the manifold. The manifold. Ah, yes, yes. boundary of. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. The manifold. No, but yes. it's okay uh, to call it shorty complex because it's constant complex variables, but the manifold in which the act is real. Yes. This is okay, like the boundary, the conformal boundary of something. Mm -hmm. Very good. More questions? Allí cuando das tu definición, ¿tendría sentido pedir que el género, bueno, la cantidad de manes o elementos que generan el grupo podría pensarse también en una cantidad infinita? Sí. Eso es igual que en el caso clásico. Hay cubos uh -huh. grandotes, tubos chiquitos, se hacen grandotes así chiquitos. <risa> <risa> o sea, si hay una familia de tubos infinitos, ya en el caso clásico, si hay una familia de círculos pequeños, se van a hacer muy chiquitos, sí. ya de fer, ya sí, sí. Lo que pasa es que no, igual acá, uh -huh. también. Y infinitamente igual. ¿no? Sí, sí, infinitamente sí, igual. Sí, Sí, pero es una buena pregunta, pero sí ya la, la topología ya, sí, ya no se tiene mucho. Uh -huh. ¿Otra pregunta? Gracias. Gracias.